making night ahead here in Milton Keynes as here on the Fight Network we bring to you International Pro Wrestling. And what a way to start things out, the IPW World Heavyweight Championship will be on the line tonight as Mark Haskins defends against the Birdman, Mike Bird. It's all coming up tonight. I'm Sierra Loxon, they call me the Freaky Princess, and I'm currently the IPW Women's Champion. They call me the Freaky Princess because I'm just very different to other women and I'm that little bit odd, but I bring a uniqueness to women's wrestling which you won't really find anywhere else. Being IPW Women's Champion means everything to me. Like, I didn't expect to become Women's Champion on the second time I've wrestled for IPW. And I really want to bring pride back to the IPW Women's Championship because when Bobby Tyler was champion, she she didn't defend it and she didn't show, she didn't give women a chance. So I'm going to be a fighting champion, a champion which IPW can be proud of. And I look to inspire women all across the world. But we are going to start things out tonight here on International Pro Wrestling with the IPW Women's Championship to be decided. Your opening contest is set for one fall and is for the IPW Women's Championship. Introducing first the challenger from the Candy Kingdom, weighing at 55,000 grams of sugar, this is Candy Floss! Very interesting situation here in this women's title match. Candy Floss, very good friends with the champion, but looking to take that title away from the champ on her first ever title defense. We await the arrival of the IPW Women's Champion. She is the Freaky Princess. And her opponent from South Wales, she is your current reigning, defending IPW Women's Champion, the Freaky Princess, Sierra Loxton. Well, Sierra Loxton won the IPW Women's Championship on just her second appearance in the company back in December. As I said, this her first title defense. And these two young women, very good friends out of the ring. But make no mistake about it, Candy Floss may not be as sweet as she seems when it comes to her pursuit of that Women's Championship. She will break the arm of her friend, Sierra Loxton, if she has to, if that will help her to become the women's champion. Referee Tom Scarborough in charge of proceedings here as we get things underway. Dave Bradshaw on commentary for you tonight. And what a way to start this first episode of IPW television with the women's title on the line. And there's that friendship we talked about but presumably that is going to go out of the window pretty quickly here as we get underway 
Oh God, there we go. C Candy Foss, I told you she'll do anything she has to to win the women's title. Quick small package there, nearly got it done. Candy Foss with a kick right into the left arm and the side of the head of the champion, Sierra Loxton. Candy Foss goes for a cover, just a one count. Obviously, Candy Foss, the smaller of the two competitors here, so he's going to have to find a way to neutralize that power disadvantage. Go to a crossbody, and there is that power. She got caught by Loxton, who hits her with a four away slam. Oh my! Using that posterior as a weapon and landing right on top of Candy Floss, this time a two count for the champion. Again, as I said, a big night ahead. Of course, this women's title match happening right now. The IPW World Heavyweight Championship on the line as well. Later on as the three-time champion Mark Haskins defends against Mike Bird. Lockster tried to get Candy Foss and here we go. It's the armbar. Calls out the Candy Cane. Does Candy Floss. She has put away some of the best opponents she has faced here with that candy cane. Loxton was able to get to the ropes, but you see Candy Foss continuing to work on that left arm and gets a, a two count. Loxton promising to be a fighting champion who IPW fans around the world can be proud of. She wants to inspire women all around the world to achieve their dreams. But her dream of being the women's champion could hit a Pretty nasty end very early on in her reign here. If Candy Foss continues to do that much damage to the arm, another two count for the challenger. Well, let us know who you think is going to win this women's title match and that world heavyweight title match a bit, little bit later on. Join the conversation on social media using the hashtag IPW. It may well be Candy Foss who wins this one. Another two count is all she can manage there. Well, that friendship looking a little less strong now as Candy Foss picks up the champion. Right forearms from Loxton to try and free herself. Candy Foss relentless on that left arm. And Candy Foss really is laser-like in her focus here. Loxton trying to surprise, he's got the shoulders down. Just for a two count. Again, the challenger regains the advantage. Candy Foss had her first ever pro wrestling match in any company here in IPW. So she's no stranger to this environment and she's certainly proving to be confident here as she goes for another cover and another two count. But how many of those can Loxton continue to escape before it saps her morale? Watson goes behind, big German suplex from the champion. And that may be a game changer for the freaky princess. Loxton in the corner. Again, using that posterior as a weapon, another fall away slam. You see her going back to those power moves whenever she gets an opportunity is Loxton. Candy Foss this time moving out of the way to prevent being crushed in the corner. Again, there's the tilt and whirl. Head scissors take down it. Oh my God, what a spear. What a spear from Loxton. Loxton with Candy Floss right where she wants her here. Sierra Loxton, the champion, staring at her friend and opponent. Oh my. Again, right into the corner, the cover from Loxton, and that'll do it. She calls that the butterfly effect, Here's and it was enough to pick up the win. And still, IPW Women's Champion, Sierra Loxton. Sierra Loxton, promising to be a fighting champion, and she may yet be champion for quite a while. Loxton with the win over her friend, Candy Floss.
All right, well, we have some breaking news here from IPW management. Coming up next week on this very program, we are going to determine a new number one contender for the IPW World Heavyweight Championship. It will be the product, David Starr versus Filthy Rob Sharp. The number one contendership on the line next week here on IPW. Right now, we are going to go to a commercial break. Don't go anywhere. We will be right back with more international pro wrestling. Well, great action already here tonight on IPW from the women's division, though. Right now, we're going to take you back to an incredible match from mid-January, the final of the IPW Junior Heavyweight Championship Tournament. It was the anarchist James Castle against Pro Wrestling Noah's Daisuke Harada. Those fierce elbows from Castle. Another cover, another kick out for Harada. Already talked about his three reigns, totaling almost 700 days with the GHC Junior Heavyweight title over in Pro Wrestling Noah. He's also been a three-time Junior Heavyweight Tag Team Champion. He won the Global Junior Heavyweight League in 2015. So these kind of tournament environments are more than familiar to Harada as Castle gets another two count. He's already beaten a couple of tournament specialists here tonight. Notably Chris Ridgway of course who won the Super 8 tournament here in IPW last year. Castle with evil intentions apparently for Harada. Harada lost his balance there. Castle putting the boot in. Referee trying to reason with Castle, saying you can't beat him on the outside. There's forearm exchanges again, this time with the stakes even higher, given it's on the ring apron. Harada, the Death Valley driver, the shoulders and head of Castle bouncing off that hard ring apron. Rada sends Castle into the crowd. This is a dangerous situation for all involved. And what is he doing now? Well, he's moved that, hang on a second. Harada has moved that crowd barrier out of the way. He's back on the apron. And if I, if he's doing what I think he's doing, yeah, Harada is going to the top turnbuckle. Harada going to the top turnbuckle. Castle's in the crowd, for goodness sake, for goodness sake, Harada takes out James Castle in the crowd. My God, how much does it mean to Harada to win this title that he would take a risk like that? Referee has a count on. Now what happens if we get a double count out here? Then what happens to the title? Referee's up to a count of three. Fortunately, both men are moving. They need to obviously get back into the ring as quickly as they can. And Harada does throw Castle back in, follows him in, and we hopefully are going to get a winner inside the ring. Back to their corners and Harada charges. Harada. Elbow. Got the clothesline. Second time. The leaping forearm from Harada takes Castle down. Northern Lights suplex again, again with the bridge. The cover. And the kick out from Castle keeps him alive.
Harada. Off the ropes. Kicks the arm of Castle. Knee right to the side of the head. And a brain buster from Castle. The anarchist to become junior heavyweight champion. No, no, no. It was milliseconds. But sometimes this is a game of milliseconds. It's proving so for James Castle. Was that Castle's best opportunity to win this? Castle. With that torture rack position. Never quite had it locked in. Harada goes behind. Uses his forearm to strike Castle between the shoulder blades. Harada will run in. Castle with the kick to the back of the head. Oh my god. Double underhook, that butterfly suplex into the turnbuckle. We saw that earlier. And Castle obviously now feeling the effects of three consecutive matches in a, what a, uh, a very short period of time in a single evening here in Milton Keynes. Castle! The drop kick. Most of that went into the left arm of Harada. It's got him all tied up and it was nearly enough. But not quite. And so the tide of history turns. Castle, if things had gone just a half second different there, would now be raising the IPW Junior Heavyweight Championship. And he knows it, look. Castle. Again, looking for that torture rack position. It's the roll up, the schoolboy roll up from Harada. Nearly took Castle by surprise, but Castle was able to get out. Castle, though, gets thrown into the turnbuckle. Nothing pretty about that from Harada, but it did send Castle landing awkwardly in the corner. Listen to the quick breaths of both of these guys. A real test of conditioning here. Harada has body slammed Castle down. He's got him in a position where he wants him. Harada with a diving elbow drop. Harada drops the head of Castle onto his knee. Castle may be out cold. The cover by Harada and Castle is out again. The match goes on. Harada looking to put the exclamation point here on, on what he hopes is about to be Another championship to put on his resume. And not just any championship, but that prestigious, brand new IPW Junior Heavyweight title. Again to the top goes Harada. Again the diving over this time though. Castle knew it was coming. The knees went up. There's a nail bomb. The nail bomb from Castle to win the championship. No, my God. James Castle for all the world thought he had done enough but Harada somehow found a way out Castle trying to measure him again kicked out a one nail bomb but no one I mean no one sure he can kick out a two Oh, counter, counter by Harada, counter by Harada, the Kaniyama German suplex, the shoulders of Castle go down and, oh my god, Castle kicked out of the German suplex. The nail bomb doesn't get it done for Castle, the Kaniyama German suplex doesn't get it done for Harada. What's it going to take?
Referee counting both men down. This time inside the ring. It could be the same outcome if neither man can meet the count of 10. Again, we'd have a stalemate. Castle is onto his hands and knees here. Harada moving as well, but we are up to six. And that strike will break the count. The number of forearm smashes to the face that both of these guys have taken in their three matches tonight is beyond counting. After forearm, after forearm. Often that point of the elbow, making the most impact. Oh my. Right in the abdomen of Castle for Harada. Harada, run to the ropes. Same place twice. Oh, that knocked all of the wind out of Castle. There is a little bit left. The rotors still turning just about for the anarchist. Gonna look for that Cappy Armour German suplex a second time. Castle held onto the ropes. He got caught. Will he get lifted up? No, he won't. Castle was able to shift his body weight just about. Castle runs in. And there it is, German suplex. A regular German suplex that time. Castle up to his feet straight away. Again takes another knee into the head. The discus forearm. Castle may be out cold for the championship. And Castle once more gets that shoulder off the canvas. There it is again though. The Kadiyama German suplex and that will do it. We have a brand new junior heavyweight champion. Big Grizzly and I'm six foot four and I'm 21 stone. No one's as big as me, no one's as bad as me. I'm gonna make my intentions clear. I want heavyweight gold. I want the IPW heavyweight championship. I want the money, I want the fame. I wanna be everywhere. Everybody else is swanning off all over the world and I'm stuck being overlooked. No more. IPW is a start of people remembering what I'm about. Just like Keith Lee, who I beat, who is now in the WWE. Just like Matt Riddle, who is now in the WWE. So the Fight Network, IPW. Where do you think I'm gonna end up? Well, the terrifying Grizzly going to be in action here on IPW next week. But right now, let's talk about another developing situation here in IPW. Jack Sexsmith, who had been aligned with both Lewis Howley and Sammy Smooth, had something to say to both of those men at the IPW Junior Heavyweight Championship Tournament back in, back in January. Now, hang on a second. Well, we were about to go to some footage from that, but this uh, music is playing. And in fact, Sammy Smooth apparently is going to come out here and address the crowd himself. Cut the music! as every single one of you. I want Jack right here, right now. Come on, boy. 
But what I was going to say was at that Junior Heavyweight Championship tournament, Sexsmith blamed Sammy Smooth for Sexsmith's defeat to Rob Sharp at Undisputed in December and convinced Smooth's tag team partner, Lewis Howley, to turn against Smooth and stick with Sexsmith. Sammy Smooth apparently believes he's the scapegoat here. Here comes Sexsmith and Lewis Howley. They brought a referee with them. Interesting development, Sexsmith saying that Sammy Smooth can absolutely have a piece of him and Howley, but it's going to be in a, in a handicap match. So Sexsmith, who apparently has brainwashed Lewis Howley against Sammy Smooth, looking to finalise that arrangement here by putting Sammy Smooth away in this two-on-one match impromptu contest here and Sexsmith playing mind games clearly Sexsmith tagging in Howley and forcing Howley to go one-on-one -on -one with his former tag team partner you know Howley he still looks a little bit reluctant to fight Sammy Smooth who of course for so long was his his best friend. How are we going to be sent to the ropes here by Smooth? Smooth will leapfrog his tag team partner. Of course, these two know each other so very, very well. As Smooth goes to the ropes, another leapfrog. The rear waist lock from Smooth is countered by Howie. They are countering each other at every turn here. Two men who used to be like brothers to each other until very, very recently now find themselves fighting each other thanks to that decision by Howley to forsake Smooth for Sexsmith. Covered by Howley, countered by Smooth. Again, the counters continue to come thick and fast here. Both men trying to get the other man's shoulder down for a three count. And neither man getting particularly close. A couple of one counts, double drop kicks. We find ourselves in something of a standoff, but this, this is exactly what Jack Sexsmith wants. He wants to consolidate this destruction of this team. Apparently Sexsmith not very happy with how these performance in that exchange. Hang on now. Smooth gonna try and unload here from that mount position on Sexsmith. Smooth, obviously enraged at Sexsmith turning Howley against him. Counters, counters the Irish whip goes for a big hip toss and lands it. You can tell by the look on Sammy Smooth's face just how furious he is at this situation that has developed. Sammy Smooth on the second turnbuckle and he gets his leg swept away by Sexsmith who goes for the cover. It's a two count and Smooth kicked out. Smooth obviously would hate nothing more than to be defeated here by Jack Sexsmith. After all that Sexsmith has caused in the way of pain towards Sammy Smooth in recent times, can this look? Now, is it me or does this look a little bit half-hearted by Howley? Howley doesn't look like he's fully invested in this idea to uh, take the fight to Smooth and Sexsmith apparently feels that as well because he's tagged himself back in. Yeah, yeah. 
Sexsmith putting the boot in, choking in fact on Sammy Smooth. Sexsmith essentially saying to Howley there, that's how it's done. Now you do more of the same. Howley going to send Smooth into the corner. Again, a bit of a hesitation. Well, that was one of the least convincing chops that we've seen here in IPW. This crowd telling Lewis Howie exactly what they think of the chop. Sexsmith again trying to show him how it's done. Howie given another opportunity to inflict some damage. Another mediocre chop from Howie who certainly can deliver a big chop just like that one from Sexsmith Sexsmith trying to give something of a pep talk to Howley, but he took his eye off Sammy Smooth in the process Smooth takes down Sexsmith and this crowd very much taking the side of Sammy Smooth in this dispute. Sexsmith with the forearm. Smooth comes back in, big clothesline. A lariat, in fact, from Smooth, but that took down Sexsmith. How he comes in. And now, Smooth had a chance to strike Howley as well. Oh, Howley! Accidentally hitting Sexsmith. Smooth moved out of the way. Sexsmith trying to send Smooth into the corner. Oh, God, wait, no, no, Sexsmith hits Howley. Well, never mind Sammy Smooth. This has not exactly been Smooth for Jack Sexsmith and Lewis Howley. Smooth off the top. Oh, leaps over the turnbuckle to take out both men. Sammy Smooth more than holding his own in this handicap match. Sexsmith rolled back in. I think Sexsmith's the legal man. The cover by Smooth and a kick out from Sexsmith on two. Howley and Smooth eyeballing each other. Now hang on now. The tension's now starting to rise. Howley and Smooth about to unload on each other. Sexsmith with the super kick. Oh my. Sexsmith with the slap to Howley. Howley apparently going to heed that very physical advice from Jack. Sexsmith. Oh, Howley, Howley moves Smooth out of the way. Oh my. Lewis Howley just attacked Sexsmith! Smooth! Slam Sexsmith down, my God! Smooth and Howley, apparently, back on the same page here! The bad apple! From Smooth and Howley, Smooth with the cover, and Smooth will win the match! Here is your winner, Sammy Smooth! Well, Jack Sexsmith's plans went awry. A world title match still coming up when we return here on IPW. I'm Mike Burrs and I'm here to win because, well, frankly, it's professional wrestling, it's a, it's a contest, I'm here to win. A lot of people sort of turn around and they talk, oh, why, why do you wrestle? Oh, I do it for the fans, I do it for this, I do it for that. I do it because I enjoy it. I enjoy fighting. This is, this is what I enjoy. Wrestling for the heavyweight title, it's justification. I've wrestled Haskins before, I've come up short. 
I fully intend not to come up short again. Do you know what the definition of insanity is? Doing exactly the same thing and expecting different results. So something's got to change. Now I can't tell you what's going to change because if I tell you what's going to change, people are going to expect it. But something's got to change. International Pro Wrestling and the richest prize in IPW about to be decided. Your official challenger from Newport, Wales, this is Flying Mike Bird. The Birdman lands in Milton Keynes. And Mike Bird, who recently had a match against Mark Haskins that he lost, saying before this match that he's going to try something different tonight to beat Haskins. He just doesn't know exactly what it will be until he sets foot in that ring. Well, last time these two met, neither man had championship gold. That is not the case now, as Mark Haskins is now a three-time world champion. His opponent from Melbourne and Worcestershire. He is your current reigning, defending IPW World Heavyweight Champion. This is Mark Haskins. Mark Haskins defeating Kip Sabian, albeit in somewhat controversial circumstances and undisputed to start that third title reign as Haskins kisses the championship belt. Referee will show it to Mike Bird as well. And that is what they are fighting for in our main event tonight here on the Fight Network. Haskins has beaten them all here in IPW. Started his second title reign by defeating Austin Aries, no less, for the championship. We're under, oh my god, look at that! Bird looking very quickly, oh my, pile driver! The pile driver from Bird! Bird goes to the cover, that could do it all! Bird nearly got that done in record time! Well, we know that Mark Haskins has had his fair share of neck problems, was out injured for about three months around the end of 2016. With exactly that kind of issue, Haskins escaping the clutches of Bird. Hang on now. He's got caught here as, as Haskins. Haskins going to fall victim to the stretch plum. That submission hold of Bird's. Bird has come out all guns blazing for the opportunity to beat Haskins at the second time of asking, this time with the world title at stake. Haskins gets to the rope. And Bird will have to break the, the stretch plum, but Bird has made his intent very clear here as he launches himself right onto Haskins. He's gonna try and do it a second time. And he will hit Haskins hard on the outside. Credible action here in Milton Keynes. Bird off the top with the headbutt. Shades of the late great Dynamite Kid from Bird. The cover. The left shoulder of Haskins goes up. We're also, of course, in Canterbury on the 20th of February for our big, big show, Return of the Pack. The return of the man that gravity forgot pack to IPW after years away as Haskins 
against the shoulder up again. If you want to come, tickets available at ringsideworld.co.uk. Bird has dominated about 80% of the offense at least here, I would say, in the opening minutes. We may be seeing here the beginnings of a historic title change. Will we see it right now? We might as Haskins gets out at two. Haskins really has not got out of the blocks here with that world title on the line. Bird is unloading here with the forearms, taking things at his own pace. Haskins refusing to stay down, and in fact, Haskins at that vertical disadvantage from his knees, trying to kick away at the legs of Bird. Now he is up to a vertical base, still trying to take away the legs. Oh, Bird. But he's got a chokeslam attempt here, and Haskins was able to get out. Of course, Haskins has been the talk of the wrestling world recently. He signed a contract with Ring of Honor, as well as all of his exploits here in the UK. Both Haskins and Bird knocking each other down here. Referee is going to have to start a count if neither man can answer the count of 10 then Haskins by way of a draw will retain the World Heavyweight Championship Four, five, referees up to a count of six neither man has moved and this is in real danger of being called off I think Up to nine. Oh, and Bird and Haskins, both of them move. Bird and Haskins, both up to their feet. It looked like it was going to be over. We're getting an encore here. The heavyweight championship of the world is on the line. That's Haskins and Bird. Haskins and Bird unloading on each other. Bird going for a close on. It got blocked. Bird may look for another pile driver. Or will he? It might be a. A crucifix power bomb attempt. Oh, Haskins, what's he doing here? On the backside. Takes away the left knee of Bird. And there's a bridging armbar. The bridging armbar from Haskins. Will Bird have to tap here? Bird trying to work out his best route to the bottom rope. That right arm of his is still free if he can get to it and he can then Haskins has to break the hold and Bird's championship aspirations stay intact just about Haskins through the gap between the top and middle rope doing to Bird what Bird did to him earlier on when Haskins had to put the brakes on Bird, moved out of the way. Stop it happening a second time, and he did it that time. Never, ever take your eye off Mark Haskins. Haskins headed to the top here. Bird's going to cut him off. Haskins, I think, believed he was moments away from victory there. Bird has... Got a hold of Haskins. What is this he's looking for? What on earth is Mike Bird trying to do? I don't know if he's looking for a superplex or something here. Both these men jockeying for position from that precarious spot atop the top turnbuckle. And Haskins. Oh, God, what's he doing? No, no. Haskins is looking for a superplex to the outside. I don't mind ending the match. That could end a man's career if Haskins can fulfill those evil intentions. Now Bird is, is here. What is Bird looking for? Bird looking for a pile driver to the outside, for goodness sake. 
These guys are gonna kill each other in the name of the world title. Oh no, wait now, hang on now. Haskins, Haskins from the second rope. The Death Valley driver into the sharpshooter maybe. Haskins, oh, this is how he beat him last time. But Bird, this time, Bird does his homework and Mike Bird, a split second away from surprising Haskins. Haskins with the, from Haskins with love. And the double foot stomp to Bird. The cover by Haskins, will that do it? No. And now the sharpshooter. The sharpshooter is what defeated Bird last time. Look at him cinch backwards. He had to tap, he had to tap. And Haskins Here is still is the your champ. winner and still IPW World Heavyweight Champion. Mark Haskins, for the second time in just a few months, puts Mike Byrne away, this time with the World Heavyweight Championship at stake. Well, next week we've got a big grudge match for you, Kip Sabian against Chris Ridgeway, plus the number one contendership for that world title going to be decided. We will see you next week on International Pro Wrestling.